press the bell icon and never miss an update from ET Auto. Hello and welcome to ET Auto. I have here with me Mr. Trang Jain, Managing Director, Varak Group. Varak Group is India's one of the fastest growing auto component makers. They get over 65% of their turnover from overseas. They have acquired four companies. They started in 1990 with rupees 1 crore and today their revenue is over 1.5 billion and they are targeting 20,000 crore of revenue by 2020. Welcome to ET Auto, Tarangji. It's been quite a great journey. You have been growing like jet motion. What are the key drivers? You are expected to have 20 million dollars, 20,000 rupees of turnover by 2020. Yeah, in fact, I think that, you know, our journey started about 28 years ago and uh, I think uh, yes we've always been growth oriented for the last 10 years our CAGR has been actually 20 percent but the reason for this is that you know we have done our basics right right from the beginning focusing on the customers individual strategies our alignment has been very good been very adaptable to our customers right from day one you know and we are focused on the basics of you know QCD first time right development good execution and more importantly, we have always been financially disciplined. So this is what has helped us in our journey so far. And uh, yes, we've grown organically quite well, but of course also in organic growth because today 65% of our sales comes from, you know, from abroad. All the acquisitions that you have made in Italy and various places. Vistion you acquired three years ago, the EBITDA level of that company was around 3%. Today you have taken it to 10%. What was the key area you worked on? What was the strategy that helped you grow so well? Not only on bot at, uh, bottom line, your top line also went very high uh, at Vistion. What was the key strategy? Yeah, so you know the acquisition of uh, Vistion's exterior lighting business, we acquired a division of uh, Vistion's and you know there's always, there was always an ambition in my mind that I wanted to be a global player, you know, in the components area. Because, you know, till then, till about, you know, 2012, uh, the time when we acquired the lighting business, we were largely more in the two-wheeler space and more out of India at that time. And we got this opportunity, you know, of acquiring. We were, we were quite fortunate to have acquired this business from Vistion in July 2012. Yes, when we acquired it, you know, it was a very low EBITDA company. It was a global company with plants across uh, Mexico, the Czech Republic, China and India. EBITDA being very low, the reason was that the North American operations were actually in loss. Even the Indian operations were in loss. So the challenge was here, how to turn around. One was, and even the sales revenues were also very low. So the challenge here was that how do you, for, for profit improvement, we had to grow the sales. That was one thing. And the other thing was that the operation, the manufacturing, you know, uh, systems and the processes were very weak. What we found in Mexico and India where the losses were there. So I think we have worked. Uh, one is that, yes, we did a kind of strengthen our leadership team, this thing uh, over the years in these, uh, in these plants. And we worked on the manufacturing processes, you know, to improve the efficiencies over here. And more importantly, we wanted sales growth, you know, and that's where we decided as a strategy we had a good level of customers at that point of time, Ford being a major customer, Jaguar Land Rover being our second largest, and we had a lot of other uh, uh, you know, customers like you know, VW and Daimler and PSA. And, but we worked, we decided the strategy, let's work at improving our alignment with the existing customers. And that strategy helped us because you know, we, we aligned very well. And I can say you know, that we have grown to over a billion dollars. So we have in the last uh, almost five and a half years since we took over this company, the growth has been very good on sales, which has also helped our margins grow. And yes, we have turned around both India and Mexico. So that has been a big positive for us. And without that, we couldn't have been able to grow our margins. So do you export from Mexico to America? Have so, you been doing that? So Mexico, so the way it works is that Mexico, a single is a very large plant. And that services the whole of North American market, including US and Canada. Then we have plants in the Czech Republic, you know, which services the whole of Europe. And uh, China, we have two facilities and one in India. This is today our footprint. But going forward, we are growing our footprint to also other uh, continents and regions. Did uh, Trump's policy on Mexico 
have any impact on your business as well? No, then? not so far. You seems to be another Mother Sumi in the making. Mother Sumi has also been very good in terms of acquiring company and turning them around. You are targeting 20,000 crore in just next two, three years. So what are the key area you are going to look at? Is it going to be mainly organic or inorganic growth? What kind of investment you have laid out for these many years as you uh, uh, hit for uh, this 20,000 crore revenue? Yeah, so you know, uh, we have two core businesses, you know, in our, in our organization. The bigger one is the global exterior lighting business. And uh, the other one is the original two-wheeler components business in India. These are two core businesses. A lighting business is 65% of our business, and the balance comes from the Indian uh, two-wheeler components business. So, you know, like I mentioned to you earlier, you know, we have been growing at about 20% CAGR organically and inor inorganically. So, I think that you know, uh, this trend is going to continue. So, our focus is going to be in these two areas, and uh, we are looking at, uh, of course, organically. Also, we want to continue with the pace, you know, which we have anyway set for ourselves many years ago. And yes, we are on a lookout also for acquisitions, you know, because without that, it will be difficult to kind of achieve the stretch targets we have laid out for ourselves in what the coming kind years. What revenue you expect this financial year that is going to conclude in March? So last year we did about uh, 1.5. This year we are expecting at least, uh, you know, a 10% growth. Almost you are there, you know, because uh, the gap is still looks a little huge. So have you finalized some company for acquisition or have you finalized the program that will expand your business? Yeah, so we have, a, you know, we have done a review of our next three years plan. And we have a few ideas, of course, organically, uh, we have worked out, you know, uh, our sales uh, uh, revenue growth plans. And yes, there are some inorganic also opportunities which we are looking at. I just went through your stall, saw a lot of electric and electronic components being showcased. Uh, is that your new focus area? You started with the plastic part, one plastic part company to now to the lighting, uh, a lot of things you are doing, cabin and uh, what not. What is your next focus? Is that electronics? Yeah, I see, as you can see, you know, I mean, because of the increasing, let's talk about even India, even globally, you know, there is more and more electronics. Today, you know, when I even acquired the exterior lighting business, you know, uh, at that time there was more plastics than electronics in lamps, the more of these halogen lamps. Mm. But, but in the last uh, five and a half years, since we acquired this company, we have seen, uh, you know, kind of an exponential use of LED lamps. You know, not only on the rear lamp side, but even now on the headlamp side. So obviously, you know, electronics is going to play a very, very important role, you know, going forward in a lighting business. There's more electronics now than plastics. And even in India, because, I mean, immediately because of the announcement of the, the new safety norms, you know, from 2018 in India, even the new emission norms, the BS6 norm 2020, you can't meet those emission norms before, uh, you know, I, I, I mean, without the use of electronics in your products. So, so yeah, that's why internally also now, you know, we have, a, we have actually kind of accelerated, you know, our R&D. So we are hiring many more, many more, you know, uh, software engineers, more hardware engineers. So the more, lot more of electronics focus, which is coming into organization naturally, because some are driven by the, you know, the, by the trends, you know, what the consumers want. They want, you know, you know certain like LEDs and uh, things like that. And others also driven by the government regulations. So how globally. many engineers do you expect to hire in the next three years? So we already have, you know, a lot of engineers about, we have about eight, 850 engineers already working globally. I'm talking about R&D engineers, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I think that the demand is we opening, uh, I mean, uh, uh, a new office also in Poland for exterior lighting business for engineering. So I think that the pace will be huge because with the kind of pace we've set for ourselves, uh, I can't give you a number, but I think that the number of R&D engineers will definitely <laughs> exceed, you know, the, the, the other employment we do in other areas. A lot of uh, uh, multinational company is trying to make India a hub for R&D and engineering work. Uh, is Varok also looking forward to s these kind of arrangement? Or how the India, India currently contributes about 33% of your uh, total revenue. Going forward, how do you look at this? You know, see today the very important uh, strategic aspect, you know, uh, which we have adopted in our organization is that we believe firstly in manufacturing 100% of our manufacturing footprints even abroad and in relatively low cost countries. And 90% of our engineering also locations, footprints are also in relatively low cost countries. You know, so this is our strategy. And yes, talking about India, 
there will be definitely more for India is actually our second largest R&D center for our business even for abroad we are, we do a lot of uh, uh, you know engineering for our lighting business for cars in India and there's definitely going to be a higher growth of uh, of of the number of engineers we employ will come out of India but also other regions but relatively low cost regions you know as such and talking about uh, engineering uh, strengths today i mean a uh, 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 lot of the oems you know or other companies have been using india as a relatively you know low cost engineering base for years probably more than 20 years you know yeah. so that is i think uh, been very good uh, for all of them it's been a big competitive advantage uh, coming back to the investment question again can you give us some number as you want to achieve 20000 crore what is the number? See, what is the amount you want to invest? Yeah. See, Total. organically, the investments are going to be in a tune of at least organically. I'm not talking about inorganic. Mm. You know, I think annually we do spend about 800, 850 crores a year on CAPEX. Okay, so that will continue. That will continue and plus, of course, what are the inorganic, uh, you know, What is the target for organic? How much you have uh, kept aside for inorganic? Uh, I can't really comment on that. But uh, is it going to be but a... We are, see, we are a very financially disciplined company it won't be an issue for us to go in even for a larger acquisition in our space. It, it won't be an issue because we've always been very, very financially disciplined. We are in a very good space on our financial numbers. What percentage of all this investment you fund from internal accruals and what percentage will come from outside? You're see, also uh, planning an IPO. Yeah, see, uh, no, I mean, I cannot comment uh, anything on the uh, this thing IPO. But, uh, you know, so today our debt to equity levels are at, at a very low level. You know, because he are, uh, my policy has always been that I'll never exceed, you know, more than a one is to one debt to equity. And uh, today we are far lower than, our debt is far lower than one. Okay. So we have, you know, a lot of, you know, uh, space, you know, where we can make these acquisitions, yeah. you know, going forward, you know, as such. So we're we are in a good space, we're in a good, uh, you know, uh, fiscal space, you know, for our organization to grow inorganically also. How do you see electrification and where Varok is going to play a role? Because we are talking about electrification of vehicle very heavily. Government is pushing hard. Do you think it is a realistic dream to have all fleet, all electric fleet by 2030? Yeah, see, personally, see, it's a, it's a probably a kind of a you know a noble kind of a uh, thought you know of the government to be 100% electrification because of the environment. But personally, I really don't believe. I think it's going to take many more years for a 100% electrification. I mean, for many reasons, you know, because, you know, uh, firstly, you know, it's the, the consumer should feel like, you know, like shifting from an IC engine to a electric vehicle because see, one is okay about a total cost of ownership. You know, there, there, there are a lot of things around there, you know, uh, I mean, the costs of uh, batteries and, you know, so the, the, one is the total cost of ownership. The other is that, you know, today, the consumer doesn't have to worry about the range. If he's driving in a city or intra city, range is not a problem. While with the battery, if you go for a higher range, the cost of the battery goes up. You know, and the third is the ease of charging infrastructure. See, ease of charging. Today, they go to a petrol pump, they don't wait for a few minutes, five minutes, they can fill up. Today, you know, we don't know that how much time will it take if they go to a charging station, how much time will they have to wait? It's an inconvenience. Yeah. Now, now the other thing is battery swapping. So is battery swapping really a viable option for companies to take up? You know, so there are a lot of these questions. So, you know, I think that, you know, it will be a, I think there will be a kind of a transition to EV, but I think it will be at a much slower pace. And I also believe that, you know, I think the focus should be first on, on the cities, the polluting cities. The focus should be more on developing the infrastructure on the city side first. So I think it'll be more like a step step by step approach. I don't think that, you know, because if you see globally also any country, nobody's announced 100% electrification by 2030. It's quite an ambitious uh, kind of a thought, you know, so I believe it'll take a longer time. For VADOC, as it moves towards achieving its uh, goal in 2020, what are the two, three key product area that you want to, even if you want to diversify, that would be? See, our core businesses are, lighting for passenger cars and our two-wheeler components business but yes the uh, natural fallout not maybe in the next three years maybe beyond you know could be on the electronic space we, i mean that could be a natural fallout where we could be doing more and more electronics not only for our lighting or in a two-wheeler components business it could be you know going forward uh, more electronics for passenger cars it could be for the upcoming ev on the ev space you know that's something which uh, could be a natural fallout because of what you mentioned earlier 
there's a rising trend on the electronic side. And that's something very important for us as an organization. Thank you so much for talking to ETR tomorrow. Thank you, Nabi. Thank, Thank you for having me.